Hello everyone, welcome you all in this video tutorial on adiabatic and vertical ionization energy determination using density function theory. Density functional uh, theory calculation are as simple as to run Hartree Fock calculation. DFT can be considered as an improvement on Hartree Fock theory where the many body effect of electron correlation is modeled by a function of the electron density. In this video, first I will give you some theoretical introduction of ionization energy, then we will determine the ionization energy of amino acid that is glycine using ORCA input file. So let us start the video. Ionization energy is the minimum energy required to remove the most loosely bound electron of an isolated neutral gaseous atom or molecule. And it can be ex expressed as by the equation. So, if you provide some energy to an uh, atom or molecule like X in gaseous state, so outer cell electron will be removed and you will get the positive ion. Now the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom. So the ionization energy of the hydrogen atom can be evaluated by the Bohr model and according to Bohr model the energy is given in the format minus z square 13.6 electron volt by n square. So for ground state z equals to 1 and n equals to 1 so that the energy of the atom before ionization is simply E equals to minus 13.6 electron volt. So if you ionize this hydrogen atom, so the energy will be zero, so that the ionization energy will become E positive hydrogen ion minus E hydrogen and it will come around 13.6 electron volt. Now if we talk about the vertical and adiabatic ionization energy of the molecules, so first we will define what is the definition of vertical and adiabatic ionization energy? So the adiabatic ionization energy of a molecule is the minimum amount of energy required to remove an electron from a neutral molecule. That is the difference between the energy of the vibrational ground state of the neutral species and that of positive ion. Now vertical ionization energy. So, due to the possible changes in molecular geometry that may result from ionization, additional transitions may exist between the vibrational ground state of the neutral species and vibrational excited states of the positive ion. So, in other words, you can say ionization is accompanied by vibrational excitation. The intensity of such transition is basically explained by the frank condon principle which predicts that the most probable and intense transition correspond to the vibrationally excited state of the positive ion that has the same geometry as the neutral molecule. And this transition is referred to as the vertical ionization energy since it is represented by a completely vertical line on a potential energy diagram. So this is a particular figure for the Frank Condon principle. I have taken this figure from Wikipedia. So reference is given here. So for ionization of a diabetic atomic molecule, the only nuclear coordinate is the bond length and the lower curve is the potential energy curve of the neutral molecule and the upper curve is for the positive ion with a longer bond length. So the blue arrow is basically the vertical ionization. Here from the ground state of the molecule to the frequency uh, vibrational level V equals to 2 level of the ion. Now we will talk about the amino acids. So amino acids are basically the molecules that combine to form proteins. And amino acids and proteins are the building blocks of life. So as an example, we will take the glycine. It is a type of amino acids. So this figure is showing the structure, 
that is the optimized structure of glycine and the right side you are watching the homo of cf1 homo that is highest occupied molecular orbital first we will create a orca input file using the avogadro so double click over this avogadro and select the build icon and click on the insert button and then select the fragment now look up for the amino acids here so you can find the list of amino acids available in this library so we will choose the glycine from this list and click over the insert button and close this dialog box now glycine is already a selected mode so go to the select menu and select none now you can see the glycine atom here you can rotate this now we will go to the extension menu and click on the orca the generate orca input file so we will go to the advanced option in the basis set we will select the triple zeta potential so select the basis set you can get the more information about the basis set in the orca input library so i am selecting this basis set now click over the control here in run type there are three options available single point energy geometry optimization and frequency so we will select the geometry optimization and the method will be the dft so click in this check box again go to the basis set and here you can see the auxiliary basis set so it is also a important parameter so there is no other option so it is already selected now again we are returning to the control here you can define the charge so now glycine in basically the neutral state so the charge will be zero and the multiplicity is basically given by 2s plus 1 so if there is no unpaired electron then the multiplicity will be the one only now click over the scf so the in accuracy we will select the tight scf and leave the others by default values like maximum scf iterations then converges second order so we will not change all these now click over the dft and the very per, uh, important parameter is the dft functional so here is the list of different available dft functional so from these list i will going to choose b3lyp for this glycine atom now we will click on the data and always write a comment for any orca input file so i am commenting commenting geometry optimization of glycine and if you want some other input parameters then you can select this check box and basis set now you can see from here your input orca file is ready so click over the generate and you can create a folder on desktop i have already created a folder on desktop and in that i have already one file is the glycine so i will overwrite this file here glycine.inp save so do you want to replace it yeah now close this button and go to the command prompt so we are at the desktop directory so let's see the directory 
command here so one folder is basically there that is the glycine i am searching for the glycine yeah glycine is there so cd glycine now again type the directory command so glycine neutral folder is there so go to the glycine neutral glycine neutral okay we are now in the glycine neutral again use the command directory command and glycine.inp file is there this one is the glycine.inp file now we will call the orca exe file by typing the orca then space the name of input file that is the glycine.inp then space then type the name of output file i am giving the name glycine.out and press the enter key so now calculation is going on we can see these calculations in our folder so wait for a min minute it will take some time so we will watch it from the folder so on desktop we have created the glycine the glycine neutral you can see the temporary file that created by this one so still process is going on so we have to wait for the process to terminate so geometry optimization is now completed after this you will have this much of files here so let us uh, open the output file so click this glycine.out file open with notepad first we will check at the last of the file whether this is terminated normally or not so or card terminated normally now we will use this output file in the avogadro and open the file click on this click over the file then open and select the folder desktop then glycine glycine neutral and select the output file so this is our basically the optimized geometry here you can have the information of the molecular orbitals like the homo highest occupied molecular orbital or lumo that is lowest unoccupied molecular orbit so if you click over this you can have the geometry of homo or lumo so now we will go to again to the extension menu and click over the orca generate orca input file and go to the advanced option and now select again the basis set the same basis set and same methodology will be used here to calculate the single point energy so we will select the triple zeta potential basis set then define the control run type will be the single point energy our method will be the dft density functional theory then scf we will click accuracy and select the tight scf and scf type now in this case will be the restricted open cell and in the dft we will choose the df the same dft functional as we have done previously so select the b3lyp b3lyp then click in the data and 
put the comment now we are going to determine the single point energy of glycine cation now next one is the let us check again so first is the basis set auxiliary basis set is already defined here then control if suppose we are discussing here the glycine cation then there will be one electron so the charge will be one and if the one unpaired electron is there then world multiplicity will be two so this is now okay then scf we have selected then dft then data so now we have everything selected here so now click on the generate button and now we will go a new folder suppose the name of folder is the glycine cation open this folder and again give the same file name that is the glycine.inp and save it now we will open this command prompt and go to the directory so desktop then cd glycine or uh, in this directory we have created a folder glycine cation let us check the file so file is there now we will call the orca exe give the name of the input file that is glycine.inp give the name of output file that is glycine.out and give the return key it will calculate all the required parameter so we will wait for that so we have calculated the orca output file now just open it with the help of notepad now look for the last line of this file so orca terminated normally now we will search for the control f total scf energy so the total scf energy is calculated this one is minus 7729.51204 electron volt and we have already calculated the total scf energy let us come back to the file when we did the glycine for neutral so there is a one output file let us open again notepad and search the same term here so the total scf energy is the minus 7739.122203 electron volt so we have put these two values in a single notepad file this one so here e is the energy for the neutral state so neutral state we got the value minus 7739.12203 electron volt you can see from uh, this file that is the glycine yeah this one minus seven seven three nine point one two two zero three electron volt and the other one is the minus seven seven two nine point five one two zero four 
so I have put all two values here. So En equals to this one and En minus one that is the cation. In the unrelaxed condition, so total energy is the minus seven seven two nine point five one two zero eight electron volt. So by the formula, we are now able to calculate the ionization potential that is the vertical, and it will be the En minus one minus En. So when we subtract these two values, we are getting the ionization potential. Vertical energy is 9.60995 electron volt. So we can compare this with the general article that is the calculated vertical ionization energies of the common alpha amino acids in the gas phase and in solution by David M. Close. So here we can see the table number one. So energies and vertical ionization energies of the amino acids. So the glycine is the first one, and here you can see the energy is basically the 9.91. That is the 9.91 electron volt, and we have calculated with our DFT calculation. That is the ionization potential energy is 9.60995. It is very close to the value observed by the experimentally. So you can say that by using the DFT functionals, we can calculate the vertical ionization potential energy. If we want to determine the adiabatic potential energy. Then we need a relaxed cation. So for the relaxed cation, let us go again in the Avogadro and click on the extension button and click on the Orca generate Orca input. Then advance. So we will use all data and basis set as we done previously. So the only change we need to do. Is we have to select the geometry optimization here. Then method will be the DFT. Charge is the one for the glycine cation, and multiplicity will be the two. So let us again check the basis set. So the basis set we need to change triple zeta potential. Then auxiliary basis set is already selected. Then in the control we have selected the run type geometry optimization. We have defined the charge and multiplicity. Now click in the SCF. So SCF is the normal tight SCF. Then DFT. We have to select the DFT functional as B three L Y P, and then data. So you can here put geometry optimization of relaxed glycine cation. We don't need the check this MO and basis sets. So you can watch from this. Here at this point, the word is OPT for the optimization in place of single point energy calculation. So this is the only change in this file. So we will generate file. I have created a folder glycine relaxed cation already, and one input file is already there. So by clicking or save, it will replace the existing one. Now you again need to carry out the ORCA calculations by using the command prompt as we have previously done. I did it already, so you can see from here the folder is the glycine relaxed cation, and we will watch the glycine output file opening with this notepad. 
let us see the last line for checking it is okay or not yes orca terminated normally now we will look for the total scf energy so the total scf energy is the minus 7.7730.18487 electron volt so if we will use this energy here in our notepad file so i i written here minus 7730.18487 electron volt relaxed cation so in this way you can calculate the adiabatic potential energy so its star is basically representing the relaxed cation so minus 7730.18487 minus this one so we will get the relaxed cation adiabatic potential energy is 8.93356 electron volt so in this way we have calculated both the adiabatic and vertical ionization potential energy for the amino acids so this journal is very relevant to this study so you can refer this paper even in the table 2 this is the table 1 they have calculated and the table 2 comparison of vertical ionization potential energy calculated with p theory and dft so this is the basically uh, comparison here so the obtained value in our case is very close to the obtained value through this theory so by this way you can calculate the adiabatic and ionization potential energy so the similar method can be of adopted for other type of molecules for getting the ionization potential energy if you have any query regarding this you can ask me by the writing in comment box thanks for watching this video